fascinating panel uh, at the Forum Krenica 2022. Uh, my name is Patrick Kugel. I'm a senior analyst at the Polish Institute of International Affairs. Uh, I will moderate the, the discussion. Um, we are going to talk about the country that gets uh, by far too little attention in Poland, in public debates, in the media, etc. The country that has just overtaken United Kingdom as the fifth largest economy in the world, uh, that has, uh, will overtake China as the most populous country next year, uh, that, has, that, 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 that is uh, nuclear pow power, has fifth largest or third largest defense budget in the world, uh, plans to be a major power and wants to replace China as the world's factory. Uh, we are going to talk about India, and we have excellent speakers bringing diverse expertise and deep knowledge about the country. I'm glad to, I, I would like to welcome first Jagannath Panda, who made a special effort to be uh, with us in person. He had just uh, flight from Delhi straight to, 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 to Poland yesterday. And Jagat Panda is an expert on uh, Indo-Pacific, on China, on international affairs. He spent uh, many years working in major defense think tank in Delhi, but recently he, he moved to Europe. He now heads uh, uh, Institute of Security and Development Policy in Stockholm. Uh, and great to have you with us, Thank you. Jagannath. Uh, we have also uh, former uh, Tomasz Łukaszuk, uh, the former ambassador of Poland to, to India, and now, nowadays he is affiliated with the Warsaw University. Uh, and we have uh, Krzysztof Zalewski, uh, who is an expert on India, on Asia, and um, working at the Boim Institute in Warsaw. We have also Great to be here. <laughs> we have also one speaker joining us online. Uh, I would like to welcome Małgorzata uh, Bonikowska. Uh, the director or president of the Center for International Relations in Warsaw. Uh, I think we will start with the most pressing uh, issue these days, that is the war in Ukraine, the Russian aggression on, on Ukraine. Uh, I told, I, I, I said a couple of uh, words about India. This is also the largest democracy in the world but the, the country didn't join other democracies in condemnation of Russian aggression towards uh, Ukraine. And uh, it, to some extent, disappointed man, many in, in the West. And as the title of the session says, uh, states, uh, India stands in between uh, the BRICS country and Quad, or we can say the, the, mm, the West. So I would like to ask uh, Krzysztof Zalewski first uh, about your assessment, your evaluation, your explanation of the India's government position on the war in Ukraine. Uh, we know uh, the foreign minister of India, uh, Jain Shankar, uh, says always that India has a principled, principled stand on the war. Uh, it, uh, it is on the side of peace in Ukraine. And nevertheless, it didn't condemn Russia. Uh, it don't want to uh, alienate Russia or no, the West. So how do you read the Indian policy uh, and why it is important for us to, to understand what India is doing towards uh, the conflict in Ukraine? Um, thank you. I think this question is very relevant um, because we need to start from the point how India sees the world and what are the principles. Um, and the, it's crucial from, to understand that India sees the f um, war in Ukraine as a major threat to Eurasia in the sense of balance of power and that f it is um, I th think New Delhi is deeply worried about Russia and its ability to project power. And of course, you know, as 
everything now in our world, it's about China. It's about um, the ability of other powers to balance the, the Chinese rise. And then from this perspective, um, an alienation of, of Russia and weaker Russia is basically a very worrying perspective for New Delhi. Um, and it's, of course, this is uh, um, on the, let's say, more advanced layer. It's, of course, the question of the world order, um, because Russia is perceived as one of the um, poles of multipolar um, world order, with weakening of Russia, um, the world is becoming bipolar again. And I think it, that's crucial to understand um, that it's rather the, this kind of strategic um, considerations which is uh, of New Delhi um, as the guiding principles for Indian uh, policy in Ukraine. So it's not something accidental, it's something very deeply rooted in the understanding of the world order and Indian, um, Indian goals in the international relations. But if you can give us one major reason why India hasn't condemned Russian aggression, India always says it stands for the international law, uh, it, 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 it stands for in territorial integrity and sovereignty of states, and in the case of brutal invasion and violation of international law, India abstained at the UN for repeatedly for many, many times. So what was the driving force behind it? So I think um, the answer is more complex than one reason. That's, that's you can my point. can select only one. So if I'm saying, so um, um, I would just reverse the question and try to, um, um, let's say, to see it from the outcome. The outcome of Indian policy is that every, absolutely everybody tries to be the best friend of India now. So when this policy is so beneficial, when um, everybody would like to um, be um, the partner of India, Russia, um, Western Europe, um, United States, so why do we need to choose a side if being on both sides is so beneficial? So you, you mean India acts in its own national interest and the current position is beneficial for its national interest? And it's also beneficial for the world. And that's something okay. we maybe if uh, also... This is beneficial for the world, you say? Yes. It's also beneficial for Ukraine. Not, not Ukraine, of course not. But um, let's say, if, um, let's imagine, for example, that from, um, um, India would not buy um, Russian crude and would need to rely on the supply, of, um, um, let's say, on the, uh, on the prices of uh, 100 plus US dollar per, per barrel. It would be a catastrophe for the um, Indian economy. And it would, for example, mean very concretely that um, India would not be able to support Sri Lanka in the crisis. Yes? So um, if we would like to um, see if, um, India joining the sanctions, sanctions against Russia, we would also um, devise the policies um, that would support um, India in dealing with major crises. I don't think we are ready to do so. At the same time, India emerged as the second largest buyer, customer of, of Russian crude oil, uh, paying billions of dollars to the Russian economy, in a way sustaining the war effort in Ukraine. So is it irrelevant for us which position uh, India takes on the conflict? No, I, I think in, in, in international relations, in you would, um, um, we need to think in terms of alternative scenarios. And um, my understanding that the alternative scenario, like joining um, a sanctions regime against Russia in India, would be not beneficial for, um, for the greater region India is in. And um, secondly, um, I think we, we see some movement in recent days 
also on uh, India joining the policy, which is the G7, maybe G20 policy, about having a price cap on, um, on Russian oil. That would be a major, um, major f f thing, and uh, that would m probably m change the f um, the also the, let's say, the, f um, the rules of the game. Okay, thank you very much. Let's, let's move now to uh, Jagannath. You can respond to the same question. You can comment and present the Indian view on the war in Ukraine, if you like. But I wanted to ask you first uh, and foremost about China, since this is your area of expertise. And China is the most crucial challenge, even a threat to, in to India, especially uh, uh, after the Galvan clashes in 2020 on the border. Uh, there is great discussion about uh, China in India. I would like to, to, to know if you can tell us what role the China factor plays in India's relations with Russia and with the European Union and the West. Was it also kind of important element uh, when India was taking position on the Russian aggression in Ukraine? Thank you. Um, I think uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in this panel um, with uh, old India hand from Poland, uh, former ambassador, and uh, you know two uh, excellent uh, experts in India. I think towards the end of your remarks, you you mentioned about national interest, and I think that's the most crucial aspect. I think every country looks at their national interest while taking the position. And in this context, I think India is looking at its own national interest. But more than that, I think um, India's position on the Russia's invention on Ukraine has to be understood in three contexts. One, that not every country are supposed to take positions on every major conflict. And I think that's how many world powers would like to you know, position themselves uh, no matter they are small powers or uh, you know bigger powers and i think india is a country which positions itself in a multipolar centric world politics and to that effect i think the kind of position india has taken is neither really extremely supportive of russia nor extremely supportive of ukraine what india has done is uh, probably maintained a more silent position and that silence is being seen as a pro-Russia position. Uh, second, I think India's position has to be also understood in the context of geopolitics where Russia is a crucial factor in India's foreign policy. You mentioned about China. If we see continuously India-Russia partnership has helped India to balance China at some level in multilateral forums and also in the trilateral forums among India, Russia, and China. And particularly when it comes to the boundary dispute between India and China, Russia has also taken a nuanced position by not really opposing India. Rather, at times, Russia has supported India. So all of this calculus, um, you know, um, factoring the China factor is one of those background factors why India has you know, uh, maintain a more silent position on the Russia-Ukraine war. The third factor is, I think, uh, which is the most important factor, is that, you know, India's geopolitics uh, in the regions. Uh, India is still a uh, prominent actor, which is an emerging actor in the Eurasian regions. Without having a good relationship with Russia, India would not really be an effective power in Eurasia. So I think keeping all of these things in mind, India's position has been much more silent, much more reserved, which appears to be more Russian, uh, which is appears to be more Russia supportive position. But while saying that, I think India is very mindful of the emotions that the European countries are currently having. And to that effect, I think India has shown enough solidarity towards Ukraine, has actually expressed uh, a lot of uh, aid and uh, you know, financial donation to the Ukraine's cause. So India stands with the Ukraine's cause. And if you see, and I think um, Patrick, you will uh, you know, recall, uh, there was a Ministry of External Affairs statement which was released after the Russian invention of Ukraine, 
And as you mentioned rightly, that India believes in having a peace. If you see that statement, there also India condemned Russian attack by saying that India does not support violence, India supports peace. So it is of course critical to the Russian position, but the international community, particularly the Europe, uh, European uh, friendly community, they do expect a lot from India and one, one can understand why they are is disappointed about India's position. But as I mentioned, its national interest matters and India is a major power and not all the major powers have taken positions in all the major conflicts. Okay, uh, India is on the side of peace. And if India wants to play a constructive role, can it play a role of some kind of facilitator, negotiator, bridge building, uh, builder? Can, it, can Modi win a Nobel Peace Prize next year because he will <laughs> deliver the peace between Ukraine and, and, and Russia? Uh, bearing in mind that currently the, the atmosphere in Europe is that to bring peace means that Russia needs to withdraw from Ukraine at the first place. Do you think India can play such a role to exert pressure on, 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 on President Putin, maybe? India could certainly play uh, uh, such kind of role. In fact, history suggests that India has played such kind of role. If we see, if we remember the Korean War period, uh, particularly the war between North Korea and South Korea, India tried to act as a mediator, as a peace builder, uh, but unfortunately that didn't really work out. So here, in this context, India would definitely, um, you know, like to see that the war ends and probably a peace accord be maintained between Russia and Ukraine. But we know for a fact that this war is a very complicated game. It's not about mediation. It's now it has become a more a matter of prestige battle. Um, you know, Ukraine is not willing to compromise. R um, Putin as a very strong leader, he is not really succumbing to any international pressure. So the war is continuing. So he, the war is now beyond any international mediating actor. The war is now between, only between Putin and the Ukraine uh, and the European community. So therefore, I think the best possible solution here would be how the European community and Russia can engage in a peace deal in, in order to stop the war. I don't see major role um, UN would be playing. I don't see <coughs> any other country would be playing any major role. Uh, and I think to that effect, India's capability to play a peace building or peace making role is very much limited. Given Modi's good relations with Putin, it's possible, but I do not expect this role uh, Prime Minister Modi would be playing because um, you know, after all, India has to look at its own interest. What if Putin does not really you know, accept Modi's offer. And I'm sure India must have played such kind of role on the backdoor channel. And probably there is a talk going on between Prime Minister Modi and Putin, who knows? Uh, and I think uh, somebody from the diplomatic community might be able to share with us more. But I think there is a role for India, but this is a very limited role India could play. Provided the, the war continues unabated for the next months and pro possibly years, do you see any room for changes in India's approach towards the world? Like what would need to, to happen to, ch to, to make India change its position and condemn the aggression of Russia? I, I think if we understand India's position, India's position is evolving on this particular war, uh, war, war scenario. Uh, initially, India appeared to be quite silent, quite reserved. But today, if we see, India is making that extra effort to make the European countries understand the kind of position it has taken. And India has actually, um, you know, discussed this issue um, with with the Russian president uh, as the you know official briefings of um, um, you know trilateral forums, Shanghai cooperation forums. Just there has been some discussion uh, in the in the forum. So I think to that extent, India would like to revisit its original position. But I think as it goes with most countries in the world politics, India would like to maintain a neutral stand while expressing solidarity. And in principle, India would like that the world should be finished uh, as early as possible. To be more specific, what would India do in case Russia uses tactical nuclear, nuclear weapons on, in Ukraine? Would, I think would that, that be a game changer or not? 
I think that's a difficult question to answer, but yes, I think India might reconsider and revisit its position. If Russia uses nuclear weapons or tactical uh, weapons which can destroy human beings, uh, you know, uh, for, for years, and I think uh, there India's position would be very difficult in terms of maintaining the same kind of defense partnership that India has maintained with Russia. Even though we know for a fact that majority of the defense procurement India gets is from, you know, Russia, but still I think India might uh, revisit particularly when it comes to, you know, having a good security and defense partnership with Russia, uh, given the fact that Russia uses nuclear weapon, because India has condemned such kind of actions in, in past. So I think that that could be a, g a game changer in terms of reviewing and revisiting India's position. And thank you very much. Let's uh, move now closer to home and see what the European Union's views on uh, India are. Uh, uh, during the last several years, there was a very positive and strong momentum in EU-India partnership. And the war in Ukraine hasn't changed that much. The, the partnership continues uh, despite some differences on the war in Ukraine. Uh, we had the visit of uh, Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission in, in Delhi in April when they jo uh, launched the uh, India-EU uh, te uh, Technology and Trade Council. Uh, we have uh, free trade negotiations relaunched uh, last June. So there is a lot of issues going on between the European Union and India. And I would like to uh, bring Maugajata to the discussion. And if you can share your, uh, your thoughts on the European perspective on, on relationship with India, where is it heading? Uh, what are the prospects of having the FTA deal concluded by the end of ne next year, as uh, said in the, uh, initially? Thank you very much for having me. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not with you physically, but I am very impressed to see my, my good friends and colleagues together at this panel. Uh, well, let me first start by saying that India is seen now as a very serious country, very serious partner and potential, potential superpower. Mm, that's the perception we have, uh, which is already a, a change, because I think the evolution Patrick mentioned about uh, the perception of India is exactly that. So India was seen as an important country but now it's really seen as one of the key players, not only in the region, not only in the, in the Pacific, but in the new world order, once we reach to this order. At the moment, it's rather a disorder, but that's why the Europeans count on countries like India, that India can be a very, very important player. That's first point. Second is that we know that India has also big aspirations very, very big aspirations to be an economic superpower, um, third in the world uh, in the strategy of Pre Prime Minister Modi. India wants to have a seat in a permanent, uh, permanent seat in the UN Security Council. It has been years. Nuclear power, India got the nuclear weapons. Uh, India wants to be really seen as a rival, not maybe rival, but as a parallel country as China is. And India is really angry when the world doesn't sees India, doesn't see India in the same way like the world sees China, as far as power, potential, importance, and all that. So India really has big aspirations. So the European, Europeans and the European Union would like that India finally delivers. So this is the hope that in this major problem we have now, conflict we have now, that we may even head towards a bipolar world, which for European Union and for Europe is not a good scenario. That in this particular moment, India will play as a big power, as a superpower. Of course, the hopes are that India will be with the West, that India will be being the world's largest economy, being really a rival of China and being also a very good alternative for China, to China, for us, let's 
uh, as a pro place of uh, production, as a place of you know doing business because it's really similar potential as far as size, population, market, etc. But the, the, the disappointment comes from the fact that, that it doesn't happen because India sees itself in a slightly different way. So this is the reason of this kind of disappointment. And uh, I think uh, these months uh, which are ahead of us are crucial because, as you rightly said, Patrick, uh, European Union counts on strengthening or making much stronger and wider the relationship with India on a solid base. It's, of course, a cooperation in Indo-Pacific in all the forums, but it's also about economy and FTA. We are very happy that we reopened the negotiations, but we are not so sure uh, what will be the outcome, because as you all know, we started this idea in 2007, and for, for many, many years, negotiations were taking place and it did not finish with anything. So now there is hope it will finally finish, maybe in a slightly different shape that, um, with what we started. But we hope that we will be able to finalize it uh, next year. But the war made the situation more complicated and it very much will very much depends on how India will play. Because the last uh, thing I want to say is that India, of course, plays in this situation um, in the optics of its national interest. And I think uh, we have to be very honest um, you know, to each other. India profits, as of now, um, from this situation vis-a-vis -vis Russia. It gets very cheap, excellent offers you know, from Russia, so cheap um, oil and gas. It is using this momentum maybe also to enter in all these places that the West withdrawn from Russia. So in these areas, the cooperation between, between Indian and Russian business can uh, be st stronger. So these are exactly the situation where Europe is a little bit worried. Because if this is the case, Russia and India cooperate closer while we hope on something exactly the opposite. So the question mark will be how India really positions itself and what will be the foreign policy of India vis-a-vis -vis the development of the war. Thank you very much. You, you raised uh, many important issues showing increasing interest in India on European side. And we have also, at the same time, we, we witness deteriorating uh, relations between European Union and European countries and China. And many people are considering uh, decoupling with China or maybe diversifying supply chains away from, 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 from China to other countries in Asia and in other continents. Do you think that India, with its ongoing internal reforms and improving the environment for business, for operations of, of, of business, of companies. Do you think India can replace China as a partner of choice, as a major partner in, in Asia, uh, both for economic cooperation and for strategic and political uh, relations? Well, let me put it uh, this way. The, the Europeans don't want a bipolar world. Europeans are very much for multilateral world where we can keep, you know, dynamics between uh, big powers and superpowers and we can deal with many. We can still, we have still hopes we will be able to cooperate with China. And uh, we, of course, want to cooperate with India as well. But Europe wants to be a player, an important player is in this game. And in bipolar world, we will just expect the situation which will be much worse for everybody because it will be just like a world uh, war in economic terms. Some people call this the second Cold War or Cold War 2.0. But when the Cold War starts, it means that the tides, the tie-ups between these two parts of the world are zero. We don't want to have that. So we are not um, trying to build a world where there is no business with China or even, you know, with Russia in the future. We, of course, want only 
that these powers are able to balance each other. And in this case, we need India, because India can be a very good counterbalance for China and Chinese expansion in economic terms, financial terms, as innovative power, in every sense. So India in this regard can be seen as a very good, not alternative, but counterbalance to create an equilibrium for the new world order where we have potential to keep relations between these big countries and for that, if we want this perspective to happen, we need stronger tie-ups in economic sense, in also in the security domain, in all the other senses, also connectivity understood as people-to-people -people contacts with India. Because the attention was given for a long time for China. China was really the number one country when all the world was hoping that China is the best place to produce, is the best place to invest, etc. Now the world knows it's not the case anymore. And now we have India and other countries of Asia. And if India uses this momentum, sees this as a, as a super chance for Indian economy, Indian people, especially young population, India has enormously great you know, power as far as people are concerned, very young population. And also with the skills, uh, one fifth of IT uh, people in the world is an Indian. Indians are very famous to be very, very good in ICT and new technology. So all that taking into consideration, the world, Euro the West, Europe in particular, would like to see India as a very reliable and good partner. And in this sense, yes, maybe much better and safer than China, with whom we don't know how the relations will be. Thank you very much. It's uh, important to know that at least India and the European Union share this interest in avoiding bipolar uh, confrontation and, and rivalry uh, going on around the world. Uh, and now let's ask Ambassador Wukashuk what does it all mean for Poland and Poland-India relations, having in mind the ongoing war in Ukraine, some differences all over this, uh, strong and even stronger relations between India and Russia on the one hand and European Union and, and India on the other hand, uh, how it will impact Poland's relations with India and how we can uh, use the opportunity to strengthen cooperation with India. Thank you. Yes, uh, speaking about the Polish understanding uh, of Indian policy in the context of Ukraine, I would say that uh, we remember what uh, Minister Jai Shankar said in Globsec in Bratislava, that to understand Indian policy you have to read Mahabharata and Ramayana. So we would like India to be uh, quicker, faster, and, uh, you know, follow the pace which is not actually in, in the uh, context of the Indian understanding of the global world, which already was described nowadays. Uh, what we, we really like India to understand, understand the geopolitical context of the war in Ukraine and uh, the, the threats. Uh, which we are facing nowadays uh, and also challenges uh, like uh, the enormous uh, flood of refugees uh, coming, coming to our country, uh, not speaking about uh, uh, economic uh, problems, I mean speaking about the energy security and, and many, many other questions which we perfectly know here in Poland and I don't want to discuss them now. Uh, and and uh, we, really, we would like India to understand it. But at the same time, as Minister Jai Shankar said, uh, India would like uh, us, like other European Union countries, to understand also the challenges faced by India and all the contexts we already, you already mentioned. I mean, the triangular, uh, triangle 
China, uh, Russia, uh, and India, and, and, and how it works uh, in, in the context also of war of uh, Ukraine. And, and uh, really what, what uh, we would like to, to see that, that India is, is really, let's say, the not supportive, but even it's upstand, it's, it's pretty enough for us. Uh, pretty enough uh, for us. But, but uh, in, in terms of the relations, uh, I would say that there is no really negative impact on, on, the, on our relations with India and the, the context of the war in Ukraine and our differences over the, the, the question. Uh, but but uh, what, uh, what we would like to see is, uh, you know, to, to make this process of development of our relations, economic relations, to be a little bit faster and also to uh, elevate our political relations to a next level, to the next step. Because we are still waiting, we are still in the waiting room and we are waiting for the visit of Prime Minister of India since 1979. And we are waiting for, for, for many substantial, let's say, movements, political movements from India. Uh, and we would like to see them faster. And we would like to really uh, to be not in somewhere, you know, at the outskirts of the priorities of India, but to, 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 to be seen as one of, let's say, the major uh, major stream of, of the Indian foreign policy, but this is the question, say, not to us, but this is the question to, to the MEA and, and, the, and the also the uh, Office of Prime Minister, when they decide, when they will really allow us to be a more strategic partner, to have those visits, because without the visits of the Prime Minister and other, say, major figures from the political life of India, here in Poland, here in the region of Central Europe, we, we cannot really count on this uh, uh, movement to, uh, forward in the political life. Because in business, in economic relations, we are really doing very well. We have the uh, gradual, constant increase in our trade, investments and uh, not speaking about the culture and the education uh, cooperation uh, and and uh, we, we can really not mm, cannot complain but we need the political allies in India to decide to, to really to, to be a little bit faster in the development of uh, our uh, relations and we would like to see this especially visit of uh, Prime Minister of India here in Poland, because I don't remember how many times we convey the, the invitation, not only for the current one, but the previous ones as well. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good to hear that Russia, ag Russian aggression on Ukraine will have no negative impact on Poland's India relations. Uh, I hope it will be like this. Uh, and you mentioned economic cooperation, that it's going on well, and business is usually what drives international relations. Uh, we had just two days ago a joint commission, Poland, Polish India Commission on Economic Cooperation. The trade this year increased by 43%. So there, there are positive uh, signs in the relationship, but, but still we, we would agree that uh, trade and investments between India and Poland is below the potential, and we would like to have it bigger and, 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 and stronger. So how would, would you see the prospects for Poland-India bilateral cooperation in trade, in investments in, in, in coming months? What can we do to, to you know, kickstart or strengthen cooperation in this area? Yeah, right. I mean, as, as, as I mentioned, this, what, what we need is a the, the, the first the move, I mean, to organize the visit, because after the visits of Prime Minister, which is uh, uh, the, the most decisive moment in an Indian foreign policy, after it, I, I would say that we will have the, we will have, uh, the signal uh, for many Indian businessmen and for the Polish businessmen that something is going on. I mean, the, 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 our relations are moving forward faster than before, 
and uh, we will not waste our time. I mean, speaking about academia, we are speaking about the, the diplomats, uh, also to, to, to convince uh, businessmen in both in India and Poland just to, to get interested in Indian market. Uh, we have a very big potential uh, on both sides and uh, I, I believe that, that this potential could be used uh, also for the sake of this place of India as a major partner of the European Union and hopefully also as a country with, uh, with uh, which European Union has uh, signed a FTA, uh, FTA agreement with, uh, and certainly FTA agreement will open many doors and many opportunities for the companies of, of po in Poland in Poland as well. Uh, so uh, the India is focused on the infrastructure building, on the industrial corridors, on the on, on building speed trains, on 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 on, on the building also it's uh, 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 not only IT uh, but uh, also defense capacities. All those sectors we can really uh, be very helpful in all those sectors. We, we can really support India in this very ambitious uh, uh, programs uh, of, of uh, the development of this the biggest uh, democracy in the world. Excellent. So still I, I understand we are waiting for this political signal from the top level. So we are waiting for the visit, high level visits from India and maybe from Poland to to India to kickstart, to strengthen cooperation in uh, all uh, across the uh, fields. Uh, Panda, maybe a question to you, because we are talking about our perception and expectations of India. What India does expect from the West, from the European Union? How, how can, we, uh, can we be useful and helpful to realize India's goals and aims? I think uh, uh, India's ex expectation from waste, particularly from the Europe, uh, European uh, continent, is very simple. Uh, to have a more um, space, you know, purpose-oriented trade and economic uh, partnership, as well as a global partnership, where um, India's concern and uh, Europe's concern can be shared. And I think there are two specific issues here needs to be discussed. One is the economic dimension. One is the political dimension. The economic dimension is that India is now you know, on the verge of having a more specific free trade oriented agreement as ambassadors uh, pointed out um, and European Union fits into that kind of account. So today India expects to have a very free flowing investment oriented uh, partnership with Europe. Of course within Europe there are many sides into the Europe. Uh, there are different uh, areas, different regions of Europe which are not really uniform. But India does see Europe more as a continent. And I think to that effect, India sees that there, is, there will be a uniform trade and economic engagement with the European continent on a whole. Uh, and today, as you could see, um, you know, there is a progressive trend is visible in India's partnership with many, many parts of the Europe, particularly when it comes to India and Nordic regions, you see a more specific, uh, you know, energy, renewable energy, uh, solar alliance, and more sustainable partnerships. Similarly, in the other parts of the Europe, there are more, you know, economic and trade oriented But Central Europe still seems to be a bl blind spot on, on the map of, of India's global outreach. Of course. Yeah. And I think this confusion is partly from India's side and partly from the European Union side. Uh, partly from India's side, Aside, because India still is very much major power oriented when it comes to US, when it comes to Japan, when it comes to you know Korea, when it comes to Australia, when it comes to China, India does like to see and engage more bilaterally. So for, for, for mainstream European communities to have a more specific uh, united partnership <coughs> with the European Union with the European Union is a big issue. 
partly uh, if you see from the European Union point of view, European Union is still very much invested in China, in Japan. India comes third or fourth in the ranking. And I think this perception is from the both, both the sides. And that gap has to be addressed. My second point was uh, more about the political understanding. I think the Ukraine war, for negative or positive, has allowed India and the European Union and Europe, European countries to think a lit little better. And I think even though there is a great level of misunderstanding and gap between you know, understanding each other's concern, and probably there is a lot of critical thoughts about India in the European Union circuit, but still, I think this war has allowed both sides to think more positively to, towards future. And I think that's a good political, uh, political juncture. And I think we need this kind of platform in order to think future, because every crisis comes with an opportunity. And therefore, the Ukraine-Russia war has come as a wake-up call for both Europe and uh, India uh, when it comes to, to look at the future as a partnership. OK, thank you very much. It, it, it's fascinating discussion. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. But I would like to give you at least one minute each uh, for a concluding remark, if you can uh, see how you see the future of India and its role in the world system, uh, whether it is on it will be part of BRICS uh, indefinitely, or it will be more West-oriented. I'm sorry, uh, Patrick. I'm sorry to disturb, but I have to be first because I have to switch into okay. another panel. Excellent. So, so Maugjata, your concluding remarks and how you see the India in the future. Well, uh, I think it, it is very important to use India's potential. India has enormous potential, but the question mark is if Indians, if Indian polit politicians really will use, will use it. Because it's a, it's a very different position to be a third world economy in the very nearest future, to be a nuclear power country, to be really a major player. And the situation like India used to have earlier, to be a developing country. India has big ambitions. So we do hope in Europe that India will be able to use this potential. And we also hope that this potential will be used for the good cause, which is being you know, together with us now, not only in this conflict in Ukraine, supporting Ukraine and you know, stopping Russia, but also generally speaking in the world that India will help, will deliver, will contribute to building a very stable world international order. Thank you very, very much, uh, Małgorzata Bonikowska. And now, uh, Krzysztof, final remark. I think it, um, India is a raising power, will be um, more, will be stronger in the near future. But let's say it's a perspective of, a, of the generation to become a real um, third pole in the multipolar system. And um, I think it's crucial to, to develop ways of communication and cooperation between Europe and India, but we need to be realistic. And I think it's unrealistic to um, expect from India that it would choose sides and, for example, abolish the cooperation within BRICS countries. Um, I would other, rather um, try to um, think how these two perspectives, let's say Quad and BRICS, can be reunited and how can we um, cooperate with India despite of differences we have. And um, last final remark, there is also um, about trade and FTA. Um, it's a very ambitious project. It will not be concluded next year, hopefully by 2025. Um, but um, it's a so deep um, agreement that we need to find a way to communicate and speak with India on the issues which are not so, let's say, which are difficult. And we need to have also a human rights dialogue 
because the FTA is not only about goods and services, but it's also about labor standards. It's about um, many issues which, is, which are in the domain of human rights. So I think um, there is a much work we need to put into finding an efficient um, way of communication and cooperation and managing our expectations. Thank you very much. And Jagannath, final comments from you. What kind of India uh, as a major power it will, what kind of power it will be? Well, there is a lot of expectations and I think India's rise is uh, going to face these expectations, face these challenges. But I think there are three issues that India has to overcome. One is the uh, domestic conditions of instability. I think there has to be a much more cohesive pattern of development domestically. That will be a gateway for India's rise. Second, India has to engage with entire Europe much more purposely. Uh, India cannot just uh, stay on continuing engagement with the European Union. I think each part of the Europe is critical to India's rise. Uh, India needs to have a much more invested partnership with most countries in the Europe, what China has been doing, what Japan has been doing, that is missing on India's foreign policy. And that has to be course corrected. Third, I think India cannot shy away in taking position on major conflict because the international expectations from India is rising. And I think uh, there is a course correction needed on this particular issue, which will be critical in terms of the image of India as a rising power, as a major rising global power. Thank you very much. Uh, Ambassador Wukashuk, final word. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Oh, final word is up to you. Uh, speaking about, speaking about uh, the, the, the future, so if from my perspective, is one thing which we didn't discuss the, is the security dialogue. We, in the context what, what the, the, those, uh, the same miscommunication on Ukraine, we should uh, really quick up and, and elevate the security dialogue which was started a few years ago between India and European countries and with a better communication with the meetings of the, at the different levels we'll have also better understanding of the interest, the security interests on both sides and it will also help us to fix the problems in other areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, at least for me it was very interesting and optimistic uh, discussion. I, I, I think we uh, can agree that India is a rising power, it will have an independent foreign policy which we will not always like, but nevertheless uh, the war in Ukraine haven't, hasn't have a negative impact on European Union or Poland's relations with India, so uh, we can expect more vibrant cooperation in the future and hopefully India will play a uh, more constructive role and, and uh, correct to some extent its position on, on uh, major international conflicts in the future, which will also make our relations uh, easier to, to build on trust and uh, prosperity. Thank you very much. Thanks to our panelists, uh, Krzysztof uh, uh, Zalewski, uh, Jagannath Panda, uh, Tomasz Łukaszuk, Małgorzata Bonikowska. Dziękuję Państwu. Kończymy.